Hey, what's up guys? It's been a day since the release of Song of the Elves, the new Grandmaster quest that finishes off the elf quest line. The quest was massive and there's a bunch of rewards and the area that you unlock is massive. So I'm gonna try and go through everything that's useful in this video. So if you guys wanna know what all the new things are and whether you should do the quest or not, just go ahead and watch this video. There's some pretty cool rewards and I think it's definitely worth it to do the quest. And if you can't, work up until you have the stats to do it and do it. It's definitely a uh, very fun quest, very well done, and lots of cool things that you unlock. One of the new things is Divine Potions, and these are pretty useful because what they do, when you are when you like boost up your stats, you know how they slowly drain over time? Well, with the Divine Potions, they don't drain. If they drain, they just go back up to what they are boosted to. Unless you br drink like a Cerebrew. If you drink a Cerebrew, then they'll stay down, but as long as you don't drink some other potion that lowers your stats, uh, they won't go down. Now how you make these divine potions is um, you take crystal dust and then you add it to the potion. One crystal dust equals one dose. Uh, you get the crystal dust by using a pestle mortar on a crystal shard. So all of this is untradeable. So one, and now I have 12 dust. 10 dust for every shard. And this pretty much provides, this makes it so that your shards are always going to be worth something. Currently this is actually like really good money. Um, a Divine Super Combat Potion is 21k in the GE a second ago when I bought and sold them. A regular Super Combat Potion was like 9k. So you're making about 12k by adding 4 dust to 1 Super Combat. Which means every single one of your shards that you get in this Elven place, I'm going to show you guys a bunch of different things you can do here, and pretty much everything gains you Crystal Shards. So Crystal Shards, if you add them to Super Combat right now, they are worth almost 30k for one shard. So keep that in mind as we're going through these next clips. So I'll go ahead and make these just to show you guys. So 12 dust and there is three divine super combat potion fours. And they just insta sold for 61.503 for those three. Here we go, this is the crystal tree patch. Uh, you're supposed to be able to trade these in for some crystal acorns, which is what you grow here. So let's see if I can do that. And you can trade in crystal seeds in that past clip though, they were noted, so I had to go and unnote them. So when they're unnoted, you can trade them for crystal acorns, and then you plant the crystal acorns into a plant pot, uh, water it just like a regular sapling, and then once that's grown, you can grow it in the crystal. So it takes about eight hours to grow, so the same time as a magic tree, and it gives 13k magic, or, and it gives 13k farming XP. So it's essentially like a magic, but then the added bonus is when you harvest it, you get 10 crystal shards. And if you remember from my past clip, 10 crystal shards right now is pretty much like 300K. So you get 300K from harvesting this crystal tree. I'm sure that's gonna go down in the future, but the fact that this tree never dies, same growth timer as a magic tree and the same XP as a ma magic tree, and you get crystal shards from it, I mean, this is probably one of the best trees in the game to grow if you can. So next up is the agility course, a new agility course. It requires 75 agility to do. The higher your agility level, the more XP you're gonna get. There is a cool new uh, counter that counts how many laps you've done. And there's an NPC that tells the global best time for the course and your best time. So there is uh, just a little bit over 15 minutes of testing of the agility course. Uh, to be precise, that was 15 minutes and 35 seconds. So uh, just about 15k XP. So that would work out to 57k XP per hour. I think it was pulled at a bit higher than that. So maybe I got unlucky with the teleports because there are teleports on the course. Um, let's go ahead and look at some statistics. So. The global best time is one minute and three seconds. So yeah, I was, that's like the best time ever. So, um, and most of my laps were pretty close to that, like 110 or 111, 113, 109. Um, but yeah, so that is the XP per hour that I got. I ended up getting three crystal shards. So that'd be 12 crystal shards an hour. It's a pretty interesting course. There is a new allotment patch. A new thing is the singing bowl and you can take crystal keys with some crystal shards. Crystal shards are untradeable. You get them doing various activities around Prif Dennis. Um, so you take these crystal keys and you, I think click on this. Okay, yep. So I'm gonna go ahead and make all of those into enhanced crystal keys. With the help of the crystal bow you sing a beautiful song and shape the crystals. Okay, um, so I can do them all at the same time. That could actually be really good XP. All, will I just do them all? 1,000, wow. 
that could be very good XP, but it probably will cost. That's right, these are untradeable, so it could be good XP if you had a bunch of these saved up from doing stuff around here, but uh, you can't really just buy it. Uh, so you take these keys, you come over here to the center, um, you go up these stairs, and there should be a chest, a new crystal key chest. So let's go ahead and open this. Uh, what does check show? You cannot ch check. You have never opened the crystal chest. Well, let's go ahead and open it five times. So there's the first one, Dragonstone, 72... Uh, let's just save the price check until after I open it all. Um, so yeah, a lot more runes than you'd get at the other chest. Uh, 444 gold ore. Wow, that's actually pretty crazy. That's, that's what, like 150k about? 175k. Whoa. So I guess this makes it so that your crystal shards will always have value. Because even if you don't... If you have too many shards to ever use on like crystal armor... You can always use it on keys, and basically it gives you money, so they're always going to have a value. Uh, let's go ahead and open the, the other three. Uh, room plate legs, nothing too great there. Uh, another crystal key. And 43k cash. I think the gold ore was really lucky. Um, the total loot is 421.7k for five crystal keys. Also, with those crystal keys, I didn't mention it in the clip because I didn't notice it at first, but I actually got some crystal shards back. I got 17 crystal shards back from five keys, which is 34% return on the crystal shards that I originally invested. Since it's only five keys, I don't know if that's lucky or not, but that's that's like pretty important information if you are planning on um, opening the chests and you wanna know how many shards you should collect or whatever. 34% uh, return is a lot. Next up, there are some shops with some interesting stuff, mostly for Iron Man. Uh, the Rune Shop has a bunch of cosmics. I'm pretty sure most of the Rune Shops don't have cosmics, and when they do, they are like completely empty. Then the Arrows and Bows Shop uh, has Rune Arrows for 400 each. And then there's a shop with just some cosmetic stuff, and this shop is kind of interesting. There's a 250 mil item that is, I think it's untradeable, purely cosmetic so it's just a giant cash sink for people who want to show off that they sunk 250 mil next up probably the biggest thing that came with this update is the gauntlet it is kind of like dungeoneering but dumbed down and it's only it's solo only you go through a dungeon you collect resources you make armor weapons and then you end up fighting a boss at the end also there is a time limit so you have to collect your resources within the time limit and that if you don't if you're if you hit the time limit, it just automatically teleports you into the boss room. There's two modes. There's an easy mode and a hard mode, and they're actually pretty hard. Even the easy mode is pretty hard starting out. Once you learn everything, then the easy mode isn't too bad, but it's definitely a lot harder than other PVM. Like, it's harder than Zora or Vorkath or stuff like that. Then the hard mode is, like, super hard. Like, you got to be pretty good at it to be able to finish a hard mode. It is a pretty fun little mini game. There is a competitive high scores for who can complete it fastest. The unique rewards off the gauntlet right now are kind of underwhelming. Uh, there's some new crystal armor, which buffs the crystal bow a bit. Uh, it's not really that useful right now. And then there's a new uh, slash weapon, a new elven. It's equal to the rapier stats, uh, but instead of being stab, it's a slash weapon, which makes it, I'm pretty sure, the best slash weapon in the game besides the scythe. It does degrade, though. You have to recharge it with the shards that you get around Priftinus. So I could definitely see them adding some more rewards to the table in the future uh, with how underwhelming it is right now. Based on the few attempts I've done and what I've seen on people streaming it, uh, it looks like the easy mode, the drops are about 100K per uh, gauntlet. And then hard mode, it looks like they're more around 200 to 250K per hard mode. They usually take around 10 to 12 minutes. so. Right now, it's not that great of money. Even if you're doing hards consistently in 10 minutes, that means you're doing six an hour. So six times 250K, uh, what, 1.5 mil. That's not too great. If the uniques were worth a lot, then it could be a lot. But since the uniques are kind of trash um, right now, it's not great money, but it still is really fun. And I really think we're going to see some sort of update to the rewards. So learning it now will be very helpful for when the new rewards come out because... It is hard to do, so you want to learn it now so that you can farm the good rewards when they come out. Go, another reward chest. What do we get this time? 
Um, plate skirts, blood runes. That time, uh, uncut rubies, two rune plate bodies. Two PB, definitely getting better. Ten minutes, that's still not that great for an easy, but uh, we get plate skirts and rune pickaxe. There is a new hardwood tree area. There's three teaks. So there's also three mahogany, and there are rabbits around, which allow you to one. I mean, not one point. To, that allow you to two tick them. I don't know if there's any place you can two tick mahoganies currently, but if there isn't, then this is a pretty sweet spot. I'm not really sure how the mechanics work for 1.5 tick on Fossil Island. I have seen 1.5 tick for teaks, so I think it should work with mahogany too. So. If that is the case, then maybe this isn't that great, but if for some reason the mechanics don't work for 1.5 tick mahogany, uh, then this is pretty cool to have 2 tick mahogany. There's also a sawmill right next to the area, so I think this was kind of designed with Iron Man in mind. Uh, you cut an inventory of logs, you can just go over to the sawmill and turn them into planks right there. There is another dungeon right here. Uh, this is a mining dungeon, so there's a bunch of stuff to mine. Okay, so right here there's a 3 iron, so that's... Uh, Nice, a lot of mithril, uh, a lot of gold. Got a bunch of Addy rocks as well. Okay, I think this is probably a rune rock. It's empty, um, so I'm sure there's someone mining rune in here already. Uh, but there is some soft clay rocks. These are interesting because there's none of these anywhere else in RuneScape. Uh, when you mine them, it's just automatically soft clay rather than uh, dry clay. And then there's a deposit mine cart uh, over here so you can just deposit your stuff and keep mining there is a new anvil and furnace right next to the bank i think this is the new best anvil and the new best furnace as far as the time it takes to go from the bank over to the anvil or furnace i think it saves like one tick so it's not a big deal but for people that are really interested in efficiency uh, i'm pretty sure this is the best area now so there is 15 minutes right there so 48,049 XP in 15 minutes. Uh, this is my loot. I'm not wearing Rogue, but the Rogue is just simply a two times boost to every piece of loot that you get. So just times everything in my inventory by two, and that is what you would have as far as loot. Uh, let's go ahead and just price check this really quickly. I don't think it's worth too much, but uh, 50K. So in 15 minutes, I would have had 100K with the Rogue outfit, which would work out to be what, 400K per hour? Um, six, uh, or three times four, so that's 12 shards. So 24 shards per hour with the rogue outfit. The XP per hour, uh, let's go ahead and take that 48,049. The rogue outfit doesn't affect the XP, so the XP, if you wanted that XP per hour, just times that by four since this was 15 minutes. So this would be 192.2k XP per hour. If you count banking time, then that would lower it a little bit. I did end up using, in this 15 minutes, I used um, 19 manta rays, and I also used up four dodgy necklaces. I started with a dodgy necklace with five charges, um, so I used that up, and then this was my fourth one in my inventory. So uh, yeah, it's uh, just one charge over four total amulets. And the reason why you might want to pickpocket these is because, according to the dev blog, I don't know if they they said they were going to put some special teleport crystal on these guys' drop tables. Um, so that is something that you can possibly get from this. I don't know what those are going for, but uh, I definitely want one of those if it's like an infinite elf teleport. Look at that little panda. But anyway, this is a new hunter area, red chins. There are a lot of chins around, so I imagine it is probably pretty good. There is a new sand pit. I think this is the best for sand on an Iron Man if you're not doing the granite mining. So if you were doing sand over at the sand pits near or in Yanil, I'm pretty sure this is better. It's a lot closer to the bank. Oh uh, yeah, another new best method, sort of, if you're not mining. There is also a new dungeon right here. So you go down here. Um, and the monsters in this dungeon, when you kill them, they have a chance of dropping crystal shards as well. So there is that added bonus of killing them here. Uh, rather than some other place. Um, so there's Bloodvelds, uh, there's Kurasks, there is Necreal, there are Dark Beasts, and it is single way, but you can place a cannon down here. Next up is the new Skilling Boss, something I've been asking for for a very long time in old school. They released Winter Todd, but that's hardly a boss. Um, this is a lot better than Winter Todd. 
Still not quite exactly what I would have imagined as a skilling boss, but it is a lot better than Winter Todd, for sure. And with all the stuff that they put in with this update, um, this is like to make a really good skilling boss, they'd probably just have to focus on that for a while. So uh, this is pretty good for how much other stuff they had to put in. And it seems like it's really good money per hour right now, like around two to three mil. Essentially what you do is you mine some like rock stuff, then you go and refine it, then you go and imbue it, throw it at the boss, and then that kind of like stuns the boss, and you go and mine the boss, and you pretty much just repeat that over and over. The uniques off this boss are the new crystal tool seeds, which you attach to the current best in slot tools. So you can attach it to a dragon harpoon, you can attach it to a dragon pickaxe, and you can attach it to a dragon axe. And that will turn those into crystal equipment, which is the new best in slot tools for those skills respectively. The boss is not AFK and it is not good XP, which is what I said that they should have done and it's what they were trying to go with this time. This boss is more about rewarding you if you have high levels in those skills. It's not about training your skills or a new training method that's AFK. This is about rewarding you if you have high skills by giving you a lot of GP. So that is very good that they went that route this time instead of just trying to make a new skilling method. So just did 15 minutes of the new skilling boss, Zalcano. Uh, I ended up doing six kills. Uh, here's the loot. I think I did get quite lucky because I have done other kills and sometimes you only, actually a lot of the time you only get like 20k in loot. So I think I did get pretty lucky, especially uh, this Runite Ore. That's probably the best drop you can get besides the uniques. Um, that was worth 372k in one drop, uh, but yeah, 880k in 15 minutes, so that's really good, uh, assuming that was the norm, but I think I did get lucky again. And the boss isn't AFK at all, so this isn't really something you can do on an alt um, and do very well. I actually did two accounts at the same time of this, and it was really hard to do. In my opinion, I don't think it needs a nerf. I've seen some people saying it needs a nerf, but... Those same people probably aren't complaining and wanting a nerf for like Chamber of Xerix or Theater of Blood when it has really good loot. So really the one big improvement I would say or I'd suggest for uh, Zalcano is, and maybe this is already a thing, I'm not really sure, but I think it should increase exponentially based on your level, like the loot and how much damage you do to it and stuff. So if you're 70 mining, you should be getting exponentially less than you'd be getting at 99. The same as pretty much any other PVM boss. If you go in with flat 70 stats, you're gonna be doing way worse than you'd be doing with uh, level 99 in every stat. So that is pretty much it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. Go ahead and do the quest, try this stuff out. It's pretty fun and see you next time. Bye.